What you doing, Andy? I'm tying up our tomatoes. Or, as it's called, staking our tomatoes. Basically, we've had some wind today. We weren't planning on doing it quite yet. Uh, but they're getting big enough where we start to prune them. So, you can kind of see what we've already done on these is we've taken off the lower branches with tomatoes. You don't want your branch, your, your leaves hanging down onto your soil. That's where... Thank you, Cooper. You're the man. Uh, you don't want your leaves laying down on the soil. That's where you get a lot of your diseases and bacteria up onto your plant. So we do the staking method. So as the plant grows, we tie it to the stake up. And uh, that helps prevent the wind, of course, from, from damaging the plants. Uh, but also, it makes them easy to pick and it also keeps nice airflow moving through the garden uh, because tomatoes are susceptible to blossom end rot and blight and other diseases when they get choked out for, for air. So this helps keep it air movement through the, uh, through the vines and keeps them healthy and strong and also keeps our production really good. The other advantage that it has is you can plant your tomatoes a lot closer together so you can get a lot more production in a small space. Um, a lot of people will cage their tomatoes, but in order to do that, you have to space them a little bit farther. You might get a few more cages per plant, or more more fruit per plant, but your plants are farther apart, so you don't overall get as much yield. So this is kind of a high yield way to uh, get tomatoes. And by caging them, you're also more susceptible to yeah to disease. that airflow becomes a problem with caging on certain varieties. You know. If you're growing a determinate variety of tomato, caging's okay because they'll grow to a certain height, they'll mature, and then when they mature, all the fruit will ripen and they'll be done. Um, with these types of tomatoes, these are indeterminates. So these will keep growing all season long until we have a killing frost. The beauty of that is they'll keep producing tomatoes and ripening tomatoes until there's a killing frost. Uh, so and you, you'll get, see a, you get a longer season. And you'll see throughout the season, these tomatoes will actually We'll continue to um, tie them to the stake all the way up and we'll put a string across the top from that side over to this side and they'll actually end up growing along the, the string at the top as well. Yeah, uh, these vines by the time we get a killing frost usually we get about an 8 to 10 foot long vine. So I mean, it's it's quite a substantial amount of plant by the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So it'll look like a jungle in here by the time the season's done. Cooper, man, jeez. Oh. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, he's still going. So yeah, just a simple tie. I don't do anything fancy. Probably not the best tie because I guess it might not hold in a certain circumstance. But, but at the, the same time, part, we've also trialed some other methods, and just, just using this seems to be the best, the best way to tie yeah, we've, the tomatoes. We bought the plastic clips and that kind of stuff in the past, and they just they'll break or they'll come undone while the plant because once this tomato starts to really pump these vines get really thick and it requires some flexibility and sometimes they get too big for the green plastic clips that we've right tried. Then they just pop off and then your plant ends up toppling over and it's not a good situation right. and these are just bamboo stakes we got at a local to us um, hardware Miscellaneous store. Yeah, one Menards thing, for those of you who. One thing we might try them. this year: uh, the bamboo sticks are really good because they're flexible, they're rigid, they're fairly strong, so they do a good job, and they last, you know, years. They're fairly cheap. Uh, but I've seen, instead of doing the string, I've seen a lot of people get like PVC uh, little tees, and they'll put them on the top of each post, and then they'll run it all the way across. And that makes it a little stronger, because what yeah. you happens is once you get all the weights up on top of these, they tend to kind of want to flop over if you get a strong wind. Right. They all kind of want to push over. 
So usually we'll secure them to the fence on each end to hold them up straight, but the string tends to give a little bit too much. So something a little bit more rigid would probably be better. Um, so yeah, we just kind of learn as we go. That's the best way to do it. So while Andy's over there tying the tomatoes to the stakes, I have been pruning the tomatoes. And as you can see, I got this one done here. So I'm just gonna show you over here on this one that I haven't done yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'll clip this one, this one, this one, this one. And I only, and probably, yeah, okay, see. This one over here too. And I'll show you. Y anything that's um, kind of growing off of the main stem. So let's see here. Get this one. that one and you want to clip it right at the base so you don't really leave anything Oops. and then what we do with the leaves when we cut them off is we just throw them in the middle put it back in the in the soil one too. And there we have it. And I can pull this sucker out for right now. This way it puts all the energy in growing up instead of out. So when it gets to the top and starts putting on fruit, it can put the energy into the fruit. Andy, what should I do with this one? We had hail the other, unexpected hail the other day and this one broke off. So I think this one we're just gonna leave so it can grow with what it has. Do we know what kind that one is? Uh, I think it's a celebrity. Like that. And this one's the same way. I think it's a celebrity. You no, know, if they don't make it, we, we have some other plants that we can put in. We can plant in their place. But since we don't have enough stakes for these because we have way more tomatoes than we did last year, I'm going to leave these to help balance themselves out for right now. So that was just a really quick video on how to initially clip, stake, and tie your yep. indeterminate tomatoes. There you go. So give it a try. We hope this Good helps luck. with your tomatoes this year. If you give it a try and you know that you have indeterminate tomatoes um, and if you liked this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and follow along with some of the other tips that we have this gardening season see you later guys bye